Okay, welcome back. Here we are at the Ellis Fischel Cancer Center uh, here in the Healing Garden. We are here for um, level three of the uh, uh, cancer exercise series. Um, this video is gonna be just slightly more intense than um, the level one chair yoga and the level two um, kind of dynamic warm-up routine that we did, okay? Um, we're gonna add in some strengthening movements um, on top of the warm-up routine and then uh, before the uh, suggested cardiovascular maintenance routine that we'll be doing, okay? Um, so let's just get right into it. So we're gonna lie down on our backs first. You can either use a mat or a bed, whatever you have available, whatever is more comfortable to you, okay? We're gonna start kind of stretching out the back side of the body. So we're gonna do what's called an active isolated hamstring stretch, okay? So we're gonna hug our right knee up to our chest by grasping behind the right knee, kind of holding on the hamstring area, okay? And we're gonna extend and flex that knee joint, trying to achieve um, about a 90 degree angle with the hips. So your um, up leg is straight. I'm trying to get the, the knee straighter and straighter. I'm trying to get a little bit, slightly more of a stretch with each repetition. Um, we're looking for anywhere from five to 15 repetitions. Um, just kind of depends on how fast you're going. Um, we're gonna move along through this video um, fairly rapidly. That way we can keep it at about 20 minutes for you guys, okay? Once you get anywhere from five to 15 repetitions, you can switch to the other side. Some other key pointers to uh, pay attention to with how your body is moving is you wanna make sure that your, your down leg is straight with the toe straight up and down. You're gonna think about your up leg that's moving. Um, you're thinking about pushing your heel to the ceiling as you extend and flex that knee, okay? So moving on to the next movement, we're gonna do what's called an active straight leg raise, okay? So the um, leg that stays on the floor, the same principles apply. Uh, we're gonna keep the knee straight, try to keep the toe pointed straight up to the ceiling, okay? So we're gonna start with the right leg. You're gonna raise up your whole right leg, trying to keep the knee as straight as possible. Again, trying to keep your down leg, the knee all the way straight, the toe pointed straight up to the ceiling of the sky, depending on where you're doing this, okay? So again, with this one, um, about five to 15 repetitions. Go fast or slow, some other key pointers. Let's go ahead and switch to the other leg. Some other key pointers you can use to uh, kind of engage the core more effectively is to push your arms into the mat or the, the bed, uh, wherever you're situated. That helps to kind of um, keep everything more solid so you can raise that leg up a little bit far farther. All right, great job, ladies. Okay. So the next movement, we're gonna do hip circles, okay? Lying on your back, again, still keeping your um, straight leg straight, um, straight leg toe pointed straight up to the ceiling. We're gonna bring the knee up to the chest. We're gonna open the gate, bring the leg, the whole leg close to the mat or the table, then we're gonna slowly extend the leg. So making as large of a circle as you possibly can. Knee up, knee out, then all the way extend the leg. Again, you're trying to get about five to 15 repetitions here, depending on how fast or slow you're moving. You're gonna have great control with the core and the pelvis, trying to keep both hip bones glued to the mat or the uh, bed as you're moving that ball and socket joint of the, uh, the right side, okay? And whenever you're ready, you can switch to the other side. So really trying to draw the belly button in Keep the ribs locked down and in. That gives you more stability to do those hip circles on, okay? You can slowly increase the range of motion as you're moving the leg. If you have any uh, weird pinching, popping, just shorten the range of motion. Stop just short of what's causing that discomfort. All right, great job, guys. Okay, so next one, we're gonna bring the right knee up to the chest, okay? We're gonna cross the right knee over midline and try to bring that right knee all the way to the floor or the mat, wherever you're situated, okay? Try to hold your right knee in place with your left hand and try to bring the knee up above your waistband if possible, okay? Now, holding your lower body in place, we're gonna take the right arm, we're gonna touch it to the left side of the body on the floor, and you're gonna open the chest up, try to lay the shoulders flat, place the arm on the right side of the body. So you're just kind of rotating the upper back from side to side as we're kind of loosening up the chest and the shoulder and the upper back muscles. 
Okay, again, about five to 15 repetitions while you're moving through this particular movement. Great job, that's perfect. All right, and we'll go ahead and switch to the other side. So you're gonna bring your left knee up to the chest, cross it over midline, okay? Try to bring it as close to the floor as possible, holding that knee in place with the right hand. Trying to bring it above the waistband, now you're gonna open up the left arm, try to touch it back behind you on the left side of the body, then over in front of you on the right side of the body, just kind of doing some nice slow repetition, repetitions. So trying to remember to breathe while you're doing this. If you hold your breath, things, muscles in your body tense up. Um, it really helps to exhale as you're opening up the chest and laying your arm back behind you. Very good. All right, feeling great. Okay, so our next movement, we're gonna lay flat on our back, okay? We're gonna bend our knees up at about 90 degrees and put our feet flat on the floor, okay? We're gonna do some glute bridges, okay? So some key principles about this is you wanna engage the core muscles first, okay? So exhaling, drawing the belly button in and the ribs down, you're gonna actively try to squeeze your glute muscles and raise your hips to the ceiling, okay? You wanna push through the back or the heel part of your shoe while you're doing this, all right? So raise it up and then lower back down under control, okay? Always remember to reset the core, draw the belly button in, draw the ribs down and try to maintain that good neutral position with the spine and the core muscles as you raise those hips up. Always remember to try to deliberately squeeze those glute muscles. Great job. Again, the magical number with this is about five to 15. Um, just kind of depends on how fast you're going while we're progressing through this video together. Perfect. If you feel a little bit of burn in those glute muscles, you're right where you want to be. That's perfect. Okay. Great job, friends. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's flip over on our stomach. Okay, we're gonna do some planks. Planks are excellent. It's a, it's a great functional um, core strengthening exercise. There's multiple levels that you can use um, to make it more challenging as we go along. Today, for level two, we're just gonna do a short plank, okay? So you wanna work your elbows up underneath your shoulders. Try to get the elbow right underneath there, okay? We're gonna keep your knees in contact with the ground, kind of similar to the glute bridge. We're gonna try to draw the belly button in, okay? We're gonna raise the hips up off the floor. Knees are still in contact. You don't have to achieve a straight line. Um, it's okay if you don't, but you're trying to keep the, the core muscles engaged, the glute muscles squeezed while you're holding this position. Let's try to shoot for about 30 seconds. So you're already about 15 in, great job. You can make this more effective. You can make your muscles work even harder by squeezing your fists and pressing your fists and forearms into the floor while you're holding this position. That makes everything else in the whole upper body and core kind of engage more effectively. Okay, great job guys, that's about 30, all right? So next, we're gonna roll over on our right side. We're gonna do a short side plank, okay? For this, we do wanna achieve a straight long line from the ears all the way through the knees, okay? So you wanna to try to stack all your joints, knee over knee, hip over hip, shoulder over shoulder. Um, your lower legs might be back uh, behind you a little bit as you achieve that straight long line from the ears all the way through the knee, okay? And we're gonna to try to hold this position for 30 seconds. Again, trying to draw the belly button in, draw the ribs down, hold that strong position, squeezing the glutes for about 30 seconds. Only got about 10 more, doing great extra sweaty today. It's pretty hot here. It's about 90 degrees out here in this garden today. <laughs> okay, and time. Great job, ladies. All right, let's go ahead and roll over to the other side nice and easy. Okay, we'll achieve that straight long line. Knees to the ears. Awesome, okay. Try to keep those joints stacked, trying to hold this position for about 30 seconds. Great job. If this is hurting your shoulders, okay, um, you can always just rest during this part. You can also take a hand and place it in front and assist the movement or the position by um, placing your right hand kind of in front of the body and um, giving yourself more support as you're suspending your body over that knee and the elbow. And time, great work, okay. Um, next we're gonna lay flat down on our stomach, okay. We're gonna try to draw the head and the face slightly away from the mat by tucking your chin back almost as if you're making a double chin, 
okay? We're gonna do a prone I raise, Y raise, and T raise, okay? So first, we're gonna raise our arms directly overhead. We're gonna try to turn our thumbs up, and we're gonna try to just move our arms through that ball and socket joint. Nice and controlled, raising the arms up off the floor, okay? Trying to keep the head back so that our whole spine is in a neutral position. This is a great exercise to strengthen up all the muscles in the rotator cuff and all the muscles that attach to your shoulder blade and help stabilize that whole shoulder complex to the rest of the body, okay? Again, about five to 15 repetitions. Next, we're gonna bring the arms down into a Y position, so like the YMCA. Thumbs are still up. Slowly raise those arms up off the deck and back down under control. So a Y raise here, about five to 15 repetitions under control. Trying to draw the shoulder blades down into the middle of the back and not hunch those shoulders up to the ears. Okay, we wanna to try to keep everything relaxed in the upper part of your neck. We don't wanna add any more stress there, okay? And next we're gonna do a T raise. We're gonna bring our arms down a little bit lower, about a capital T, our thumbs are still up. We're gonna raise those arms up off the floor, the mat, the bed, wherever you're situated. Trying to squeeze those muscles in between those shoulder blades as much as possible, relaxing the upper neck and the trap muscles up close to your ears, okay? Excellent job. Okay, and last thing, we're gonna do what we call a swimmer, okay? It's basically a, a snow angel while you're lying face down. So you're gonna start with your hands on your tailbone, trying to sweep your arms through a full range of motion, reach those arms out as far as you possibly can as you swing those arms up above your head. Light finger touch over the head, then back the way you came, right to the tailbone, okay? Try to keep those hands, elbows, and shoulders as high to the sky or the ceiling as you possibly can. Again, keeping those Muscles up by your ears, those upper neck and trap muscles relax. Try to use everything down in the middle of your back. Strengthen those muscles between the shoulder blades. Great job. Okay, next. We're gonna relax. We'll go ahead and come up to all fours. Okay. We're gonna do what we call a cat cow or a cat camel. Okay. So we're gonna incorporate some breathing with this. Okay. So we're going to exhale through pursed lips as we draw the belly button in, round the back upwards towards the sky or the ceiling. Then you're gonna inhale through the nose as you allow the belly to dip down and fill towards the floor, okay? In order to, to incorporate some neck movement with this, you go ahead and look up as your belly dips down to the floor and you're inhaling, and you'll tuck your chin and look down through your legs as you're exhaling through pursed lips and rounding the entire spine up to the ceiling. Great work. Excellent. Again, the magical number is about five to 15. Okay. And next, as much as you can, as much as you feel comfortable with your knees and your hips, we're gonna rock our hips back to our heels. Okay, we're gonna place our elbow right between our knees. How about we put our right elbow on the floor? Okay. We're gonna place our left hand right behind our neck and we're gonna try to touch our left elbow to the floor then point our left elbow at the ceiling and try to follow your elbow with your eyes so the whole spine is rotating, okay? Make sure you're breathing while you do this. Remember, if you hold your breath, you're tightening up all the muscles in your body, you're not gonna be able to move as freely as we'd like, okay? Excellent, about five to 15 repetitions. And then we'll go ahead and switch to the other side. So now let's place the left elbow on the floor right between those knees, the right hand is right behind your neck. You're gonna touch the right elbow to the floor. Point the right elbow at the ceiling. Try to follow that elbow with your eyes so you're getting that neck rotating as well along with the rest of the spine. Great work. Nice job, Jenny. Good job, Elena. Okay. Next, we're gonna go in and come up to all fours. We're gonna do what we call fire hydrant. So, this is the exact same movement as the hip circles that we did while we were lying on our back, okay? We're gonna try to remember to brace the core muscles by drawing the belly button in, drawing the ribs down, so all the movement comes out the ball and socket joint without the rest of the core uh, and the body moving, okay? So we're gonna bring the right knee up to the chest. We're gonna open the gate, try to raise your knee and your ankle together as one unit, then you're gonna extend the leg back behind you, okay? Think about kicking your heel straight to the wall behind you, okay? So knee comes up to the chest, the leg goes out wide to the side and straight back behind you, okay? Up, out, 
back. There we go. Trying to really isolate that ball and socket joint on that right side. All the movements coming out that, um, that side of your body, none out the spine. Great job. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and switch to the other side. So our left leg is going up to the chest as much as your body will allow. Out wide to the side. And then straight back. Excellent job. Okay, up, out, and back. Good work. Try to get full extension. Really draw those ribs down and pull the belly button in as you're doing those circles. Very good. Okay, now we're going to get a little bit more advanced with this quadruped position. We're just going to do some bird dogs, okay? So we're going to reach. We're going to remove our right hand and our left leg from the floor, and we're going to fully extend and reach it above the head and the leg back behind the body. And then we'll bring the arm and leg back down. We're just gonna stay on this right side with the right arm and left leg. We're gonna fully reach, extend, trying to draw the belly button in, then coming back down to the floor, okay? This requires a lot of balance on the opposite arm and leg, as well as core stability, core strength, allowing you to move that arm and leg up off the floor there. Great job. Make sure that you breathe while you're doing this. Don't want to be holding the breath. Should still be able to be relaxed and strong at the same time. Two kind of juxtaposing ideas. Okay. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side. So now our left arm and our right leg will be moving. Reaching up as far as you can. Trying to create a straight long line. Try to elongate as much as you can from your fingertips to your toes. Great work. Okay. All right. You're doing awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and relax. Next, we're gonna come up to the feet. Okay, you can either, if you're using a mat, you can stand on the mat. Um, sometimes that makes it a little bit more challenging because the surface is slightly more unstable. If you wanna just stand right on the floor, um, that's also really fine, okay? So what we're gonna do is take a nice wide stance with our feet. Um, you can either keep your toes straight ahead or turn them out slightly, okay? We're gonna place our hands on our knees and we're gonna do what we call an active groin stretch, okay? So lowering our center of gravity by bending our knees and our hips, just gonna kind of slide our body side to side, okay? So bending one knee, trying to keep that trailing leg straight. Should feel a stretch in the inner part of the thighs on both legs, okay? If you wanna go a little bit more deep with this, you can always place the hands on the floor or the ground, and you're still doing the same thing, kind of trying to slide side to side on the same level, okay? Try to keep your, both of your feet flat. You don't want to be coming up on the toe, especially on that bent knee side, okay? Very good. All right, we just got two more things, folks. You're doing great. Let's go ahead and stand on up, nice and easy, okay? We're going to put ourselves in a split stance, okay? This is going to challenge balance in an asymmetrical position, okay? So we're going to place our right foot in front, our left foot in back. How long you choose to split is totally up to you, okay? We want to try to keep both toes straight ahead as much as possible, okay? So three times, we're going to reach down to the ground, go as low as you comfortably can, and then up to the sky of the ceiling, okay? So down and up nice and easy at your own pace. Excellent job. Okay, you can make it more challenging by following your hands with your eyes. All right, so next one, we're gonna side bend and reach, okay? So we're gonna side bend our torso and reach our arm over top, side to side. Okay, so about three times each side here, okay? You can really challenge your balance and your core stability by reaching as far as you possibly can right before you lose your balance and then stand up safely out of it. Okay, next, since we have our right foot in front, we're gonna reach down inside our right foot. We're gonna rotate our torso, try to follow our hands with our eyes, we're gonna turn over your right shoulder. So down, okay, and then up. Excellent, down, and then up. Really challenge that balance as that head turns, it gets really difficult, okay. And then last version with this right foot in front, legs might be burned a little bit, that's okay. We're making them stronger. We're gonna go down outside your right foot, up over your left shoulder. Down outside the right foot, up and over the left shoulder. Okay? Excellent job. All right. Great work. Okay, that was one leg. Let's do the other one. 
All right, so left foot's in front. Remember, you get to choose how long and low you want to be in this position, okay? The lower you, you uh, bring your hips and, and bend your knees, the more challenging it's going to be for the leg muscles. So you can really make this like a strengthening exercise. So we're going to go three times. We're going to reach down on either side of the foot or the ankle, okay? And then up to the sky of the ceiling. Down and up. Good. Okay, next we're gonna side bend and reach over top of our body. So you're side bending the torso and trying to lengthen the ribs on one side of your body as you reach and challenge that balance. Okay, if you lose your balance, that's okay. Just kind of try to reposition and try to get back into the movement. All right, now we're gonna go down inside the left foot. Okay, and you're gonna rotate and reach over your left shoulder. Okay. Down inside. Over the left shoulder, down inside, up one over the left shoulder, okay? And last one, we're gonna reach down and outside, up over the right shoulder. Down and outside, over the right shoulder. Ooh, I almost lost my balance there. <laughs> Good job, okay. Very last movement, okay? We're gonna attempt what we call hip pop-ups, okay? This is great for the mobility of your knees, ankles, and hip joints, okay? It's also gonna be a great stretch on the back side of the body, okay? So we're gonna try to bend down, we're gonna grab our toes, so a hamstring stretch, okay? Then we're gonna drop our hips down into a, as low of a squat as you can comfortably achieve, okay? That means something different for everybody. Still hanging on to our toes, we're gonna pop our hips back up, straighten the knees, stretch the hamstrings, okay? And then back down into a low squat as you comfortably can achieve, and back up, down, and up. Good. Excellent job. Let's try one more. Down, and up. Good. Okay. All right. Fantastic job. So, for the strength, uh, the strengthening part of this particular uh, workout in the level three of the series. Um, we're gonna do a five exercise circuit, okay? Um, the idea is to do this circuit uh, under timed constraints, okay? So you'll have 30 seconds to do your exercise. Um, we'll go down the list from one exercise to the next, to the next, to the next, okay? And today we'll take about a minute break in between each of the different exercises, okay? If you can shorten the rest period to 30 seconds, and you can achieve um, eight uh, repetitions on uh, unilateral or, or one-sided exercises or 15 repetitions on bilateral exercises, for instance, the sit to stand, okay? You can do that for two rounds, um, working for 30 seconds, taking a 30 second break. You can move up to level four. So it's kind of a, uh, a constraint-based um, progression with this whole series, okay? So to get right into it, we're just gonna go ahead and start. Okay, so our first exercise is called a sit to stand, all right? Um, you have probably done this particular exercise before. All you need is a chair um, and a yoga mat or a bed for this entire routine, okay? So on a sit to stand, for 30 seconds, um, with great technique, we're just gonna sit down to the chair. You guys ready to begin? All right, here we go. So for 30 seconds, ready, set, go. You're gonna sit down to the chair, okay? As you rise out of the chair, you wanna have great posture, lean the torso forward, bring the nose over the toes, and use your whole foot to drive up out of the chair, okay? So standing up, sitting back down under control, the more you tip the torso forward, bring the nose over the toes, um, the more hip power you're gonna to have to rise out of the chair effectively, okay? So we're at 25 seconds, you only got five more. Keep getting those repetitions, that work. Two, one, and stop, good job. So that was 30 seconds. If you can achieve 15 repetitions in that 30 second time frame, you get to move on, okay? Our next exercise, we're gonna take a minute long break before we uh, hit our next exercise, okay? But our next exercise, we're gonna be lying face down on the mat, we're gonna be doing that swimmer, similar to how we did in the warm up routine, okay? So in about 35 more seconds, we'll get this thing going. And just a reminder, with all of these movements, they should be pain-free, okay? You shouldn't feel any stabbing, pinching feelings in the joints. If you do, discontinue the exercise and consult with your physical therapist, okay? 
So about 15 seconds, we'll get this thing going. Burning sensations in your muscles is totally fine, and that's normal, okay? Hopefully we do achieve a little bit of a burn. All right, in five seconds. Three, two, one. We're doing the swimmer now. Awesome job. So achieving that full range of motion at the shoulder joint, starting at the tailbone, trying to lift your hands, elbows, and shoulders as high to the ceiling or the sky as you can, going through a full range of motion at the shoulder. If it helps, once you get to that capital T position, if you want to roll the thumbs up to the ceiling to kind of clear more space in the shoulder, that actually makes the movement more effective. Okay, doing great. Four, three, two, one, and time. Good job. All right, you get another minute to rest. That was exercise number two. Just like with the sit to stand, if you can do about 15 repetitions in that 30 second time frame, you get to move on to level four, okay? Remember, we're going slower today if you can pare down the rest periods to 30 seconds. Go 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. That's where you want to be to advance, okay? Our next exercise is you're going to be up in all fours position. Just like in the warm-up routine, we're going to go those, the fire hydrants, okay? So we're going to go one leg at a time. We're going to try to get about eight repetitions on one side, and then at 15 seconds, we'll switch to the other side, okay? So here in about 20 seconds, we'll get this thing going. Remember, um, to make the exercise more effective, you're trying to draw the belly button in, brace the core muscles so all the movement is coming out the ball and socket joint. All right, ladies, five seconds. Four, three, two, one, and go. So knee comes up to the chest. The whole leg goes out wide as one unit. You're gonna hit the leg straight back. This is a great exercise to stimulate all those hip and glute muscles. Okay, three, two, one, and it switch to the other side. So the left leg comes up to the chest, left leg goes out wide, left leg goes straight back. Excellent job, we're almost there. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Good work. Okay, we'll take another minute break. That was exercise number three in our five exercise circuit. Okay, exercise four, we're gonna be doing some push-ups, okay? It's not what you think. We're gonna bring our body higher. Um, to do this, you can use a wall or any elevated surface, okay? The higher that your torso is, the less challenging it is to those upper body movements. Um, again, you shouldn't be feeling any pain whatsoever, especially in the shoulders. If you do, stop. Um, definitely consult with your trusted physical therapist, okay? So about 25 seconds, we'll get this going. You notice Jenny is using the wall, okay? Elena is using a slightly lower surface. This could be equal to like the back of a chair or a table or even the back side of a couch. Okay, about 10 seconds, we'll get going. I'll move this chair so they can see this a little bit better. All right, five, four, three, two, one, and go. Okay, so keeping your whole body straight in one unit, a straight line from the ears all the way through the ankles. You're lowering your body as low as you can. If you're using the wall, you're only going as far as you can to where your face or your nose almost touches the wall. You won't get the full range of motion with the wall push-up, okay? Again, if you can get about 15 or more repetitions in 30 seconds, you can make it challenging by lowering your body even more. The lower you are to the floor, the more challenging. Three, two, one, and time. Nice job. Or you can simply do more repetitions. If you can get 15 or more, remember you get to level up to level four, okay? So one more minute rest, we'll do exercise number five and that'll be our first round. We're gonna shoot for two rounds of this exercise circuit in level three. All right, the last and final exercise we're gonna be doing is laying on our back, okay? It's a great abdominal exercise. It's kind of a, a similar movement to how we did in the warm up, where we rotated our spine, got the spine moving. Um, this is actually going to help kind of control that range of motion that you probably develop during that particular kind of warm-up exercise right there, okay? So about 20 seconds. This is called a bent knee wiper, okay? So what we'll do in about 14 seconds is you're going to raise your um, legs up off the floor. You're trying to keep your hips at about 90 degrees, knees about 90 degrees, and you have to keep your ankles and knees glued together. All right, three, two, one, and go. What you wanna do is bring your arms out wide in a capital T, give yourself some more stability. You're gonna to try to lower your legs as close as you can to the floor under control, 
and then raise them back up, still trying to maintain those 90 degree positions. Both Elena and Jenny are doing a great job doing this right now, okay? If you can get about eight on each side, since this is a one-sided movement, that's where you get a level up, okay? Five more seconds, four, three, two, one, and time. Great job, okay. We'll take a minute rest. We're gonna go through that whole circuit one more time, just as an example of what it will look like um, before you level up to, to level four, we're gonna go ahead and shorten the rest period to 30 seconds, okay? Since you kind of know uh, what the movements are and you have the instruction on that, feel free to go at your own pace. You can take longer rest periods um, to kind of help recover and push through that fatigue a little bit more if that's really starting to stack up, okay? So in about 30 seconds, we'll go ahead and get going. So remember, our first exercise in the circuit is the sit to stands, okay? Great for strengthening those thigh muscles gonna help you get up more powerfully out of that chair um, so you can get around your house better, okay? All right, so 15 seconds. We're almost there, friends. One more time through the circuit. Let's see if we can get about 15 repetitions on each of these movements so we can level up. All right, you guys ready? About five seconds. Great job. It's still 94 degrees here, by the way. Ready, set, go. Sitting down, standing up, bringing the nose over the toes, trying to tip the torso forward. Make sure you're keeping your whole foot flat to the floor. That way you can really engage every muscle in your whole legs, okay? 15 more seconds. Doing great, trying to get about 15. Excellent job. Make sure you're keeping those knees tracking straight ahead in the same direction as those toes. You don't want to put too much torque on the knees. Four, three, two, one, and time. Good job, okay, 30 second break. Okay, our next movement is the swimmers. So you're gonna be face down on the mat. Remember, we're moving more quickly, so we're going to 30 second rest periods. Okay, about 15 seconds. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure you're recovering, you're using those 30 second rest periods to your best advantage. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, and go. So arms are moving through a full range of motion. Nice job. Good work, okay? Remember, once you get up to about that capital T position, you're welcome to roll those, th those thumbs up. That clears a little bit more space for that ball and socket joint there in the shoulder. Doing great. Nice job, ladies, about 10 more seconds. Excellent, good. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Nice work, okay. So a 30 second break. We're gonna move along. Our next, we're gonna be on all fours. We're gonna do those hip circles. Remember, we're doing 15 seconds on the right side, then 15 seconds on the left side, trying to achieve about eight repetitions with those circles, okay? Then we wanna try to really brace the abdominal muscles, draw the belly button in, keep the ribs down. Everything above your waistband is locked in nice and tight, no movement. All right, you guys ready? Three, two, one, and go. So right leg is up to the chest, leg goes out wide to the side, Leg kick straight back, trying to create a straight long line, ear through the ankle. Doing great, about five more seconds in, we'll switch. Awesome job, guys. And switch to the left leg. Great. Bracing with the abdominals. Only the ball and socket joint is moving. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Great work. Doing awesome. Okay, that was exercise three. We just got two more to go. All right, so next is our push-ups again. So you get to choose how high your angle is, and you get to choose what uh, you use to place your hands against to make this more or less challenging, okay? So you can use the wall, or you can use a lower shelf-like surface, like the back of a chair or a countertop, okay? In five seconds, trying to get about 15 repetitions. Two, one, and go. Lowering yourself close to the rest that you're holding the hands on, trying to keep a straight long line, ears to the ankles, the whole body's moving as one unit. Great work. Nice job, ladies. Awesome job, about 15 seconds. Doing so good. The arms are burning a little bit. That's exactly what we want. We're getting those things stronger. Make sure there's no pain in the shoulder joints. Four, three, two, one, and time. Doing so good, just got one more exercise to go. We're gonna get those abdominal muscles really good to finish this thing out. 
Okay, so we're lying down on our backs. We've got about 15 seconds to recover and prepare. Remember, you want to keep your lower, your upper legs straight up to the ceiling of the sky at a 90 degree angle. Knees are bent at 90s. Uh, knees and ankles are glued together. Okay, four, three, two, one, and go. So lowering your legs to the floor as far as you comfortably can. If it's just a couple inches, great. If this hurts your back, just rest during this time, okay? Doing awesome. About 15 more seconds, trying to get about eight on each side if possible. Excellent work. 10 more seconds, you're almost there. Great job, ladies. Five, four, three, two, one, done. Great job. You're now strengthened. <laughs> okay, so that's the strength training uh, portion of our level three workout for the cancer exercise series. Okay, we do have one additional piece. Um, ideally, we are doing some sort of cardiovascular maintenance or building routine, okay? So the routine for level one is about six minutes of just a nice, easy walk, okay? You have two different ways that you can do that, all right? You can go outside, um, you can walk around your room, or you can use a piece of cardio equipment, okay? I would recommend setting the speed um, of your walk or your cardio equipment to about two to three miles per hour. If you are stuck inside during this time, you can always just walk around a fair sized room and just try to pay attention to how many times you walk and do laps in about six minutes, okay? So that's one way to kind of get the, the heart rate up and challenge the cardiovascular system to help maintain and build health, okay? Another way that you can do this is to practice some lateral movements, okay? A lot of what we do as human beings is move straight ahead in the straight ahead and, and backwards plane, okay? So the more that we can move side to side, um, the more health you can bring to your core, your hip, your ankle, your knee joints, all right? There's a number of different movements you can do. You can sidestep, okay? So you can step side to side, again, trying to move as fast as you comfortably can and trying to record how much distance that you travel, okay? You can cross over step, always bringing a leg in front, all right? You can even karaoke, okay? So you can alternate. Some of you might know this is like the grapevine, okay? So I challenge you to do about six minutes of um, as quick uh, movement as you can. Try to get the heart rate up. Uh, if you feel like you need to rest during that six minutes, that's okay, okay? Try to pay attention to how much uh, movement that you achieved in that time frame and try to either meet or beat that each time that you do this routine, okay? So great job.